teams. First for the Spurs, Kawhi Leonard is out there with Tony Parker. Pick back in 2008, the 6 11 pivot man Tiago Sporty. Then it's Green and it's Duncan in at the four. And for the Heat, Chalmers and D Wade are the guards. And playing at the five, the always versatile 6 11 star big man able to score inside and out, Chris Bosch. And it's LeBron James and it's Haslam in at the four side. And that one's good. Well, you know, with LeBron James is the main post threat on Miami. The outside shooting touch of Chris Bosch fits perfectly to help them space the floor, and he continues to expand his range. From deep green, Miami grabs the miss. It's three on three on the fast break. Here's Wade. Shot is blocked, and he recovers it. Here is Splitter. Pass to Duncan. And they're going to count the bucket and send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. We talk about Bosch in his shooting range. He's trying to develop a reliable three-point shot as well. Well, it's happened. In the playoffs last year, he shot a lot of threes. It's kind of a function of the Miami offense, trying to provide floor spacing for LeBron and Wade. Uh, but in some ways, it takes Bosch away from what's made him good, too. The slashing and the ability to score around the basket. About a minute and a half through the first quarter. The Chalmer shot is no good. Kevin, I didn't like that defensive effort at all, but they are lucky he missed it. Yeah, they were very lucky defensively because there was some miscommunication there. They left him wide open. Coach Popovich was fine last season for sitting out his top players in a nationally televised matchup against the Heat. I certainly understand the league's posture there, and it was a lot said about it. Yet, for a veteran team like the Spurs with championship aspirations, I understand resting key players during the course of the regular season. LeBron dishes the buck. Good, and the assist goes to LeBron. Bosch has got his second bucket. Oh, Maestro, he is so good at making those lead passes, like conducting an orchestra. Easy little jump shot for him right there, guys. And back to that fine for Popovich, a quarter of a million dollars. Steve, that'll leave a dent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But, you know, Popovich uh, enjoys tweaking the league at times. Uh, this was clearly an effort to do that. But, uh, look, uh, I think it's it's good for him to, to actually you know, kind of let the league know every once in a while. That if you're going to give us that kind of schedule with my older team, I'm, you know, I'm going to sit them down once in a while. And let's take a moment here to get your guys' take on scoring so far for the Heat. And the points they're getting in the lane will really help them open up the floor. You know, another factor in their offense so far has been their ability to convert and score off turnovers. Both free throws good from Wade. The Spurs have always been very mindful of resting key players during the regular season. Some of it has to do with age of their players. Some of it is regarding talent because they knew they were a playoff team most years. And you look at the research, there is something to be said for not playing guys when they're fatigued because injuries are more likely if you play tired. And here's Wade after the three-pointer from Green. Here's Haslam, and the layup's good off the glass. Here it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great position inside. Yeah, getting the ball into the post should be their first option every time down. Force the defense to adapt and adjust. Here's Duncan, and there's the three-second violation. Morris Diaz jumped in for San Antonio. A heat leading by six. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Kevin, Greg Popovich and I got a chance to talk for a bit. He knows they're up against a team that plays best when they're getting to the rim. He told me that their number one concern is going to be sliding over to help on any drives and closing up any lanes to the hoop as quickly as possible. Good rotation is key, guys. Thank you, Doris. And back to the Spurs and their strategy of resting their star players not without some controversy. NBA, as you may recall, fined the Spurs and Coach Popovich for sitting all their starting players for a nationally televised game back in November. Well, it was their fourth game in five nights, and Pop wanted to rest some of their guys because of just the, the nature of their schedule. 
but I think the, the problem was he didn't give the league advance warning. And that game against Miami, when he rested those three players, he actually sent them home. And I think that was a little shot at the league. And that's why there was a problem, and that's why the Spurs and Popovich ended up getting fined. And that one's good. You know, they really aren't putting up any resistance on the low block. That's the fifth consecutive basket inside. And Steve, these looks they're allowing are almost automatic. You just assume he's going to knock those down when he's as open as he was there. LeBron kicks to Chalmers. No good on the triple. Hey, last season, Chalmers missed a game-winning shot. That happens to a lot of guys in this league, but what he did the next game is of note. He made 10 threes and arguably his best game ever as he set a Miami Heat team record for makes beyond the arc. A different look for Miami. Chris Anderson has checked in for Botch. Allen comes in for Dwayne Wade. And it's Norris Cole in for Mario Chalmers. Diaw can't hit. Well, one of his issues is he's a player that just does not excel at fighting through contact on his way to the rim. Here's Anderson. It's rebounded by Boris Diaw. Spurs trail by 10. Bonner passes to Ginobili. San Antonio again missing. And Mario Chalmers grew up in Alaska. Not too many NBA players hailing from up there. Taking with the 34th pick back in 08. He's played his entire career with the Heat. And really, it was a, a perfect situation for him when LeBron arrived because he's a kind of a combo guard. He plays the point, but he's an excellent spot-up shooter. So he can play off of LeBron and Wade quite well. Now, Battier, after the miss, three from Bellinelli. Fifty seconds left here in the first quarter. LeBron kicks to court. And the shot counts. He's fouled. And it's a chance for a three-point play. How about the passing there? Moving the ball without any thought, without any agenda. It's hard to overstate all the points they've scored on assists today. Beautiful to watch. And it's the Heat with the ball. After the missed three from Bellinelli. Here's Battier. Kept alive. Anderson. And another basket for Miami. Take a look at the rebound totals, guys. That's plus five now on the glass. And, Steve, I don't think there's any question which team came out with more energy and enthusiasm. Leonard, no luck. LeBron gets to Allen. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Spurs will take it. Difficult to explain that turnover. I mean, I guess he thought he had more room than he did, but he really lost his place on the court. Just four seconds left to play in the first quarter. That's a two from Bellinup. Oh, and the buzzer beater's good. And an ideal finish to the quarter for them as he drains it at the buzzer. Welcome back, everyone. We're ready to get going again as this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports continues. Players are topped off with Gatorade, hydrated, and ready to get going again as well. And guys, we've seen a confident-looking Heat team out there. And a good start for this club. I like the way they played together. Really moved the ball and did a nice job offensively. Yeah, excellent ball movement. It's paid off on the scoreboard, too. A lot of people thought the East would be a cakewalk for Miami last year, but Indiana made sure that wasn't going to be the case. What a series with the Pacers using oh, 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 oh. The rim right there. Just a remarkable jam. These fans' jaws are on the ground right now. Yeah, that is showtime stuff right there. Major highlight reel material. And count it. The shot is good. He'll go to the free throw line. Exceptional play to take the bump and still get it up and down. Yeah, way to stay with it and look to finish the play right there. Udonis Haslam, he's checked in for Miami. Well, I think this is one of the more amazing stats in sports when you think about it. No matter the season or the roster, the Spurs just seem to find ways to win 50 games. They've done it 14 straight seasons now, which is off the charts. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, Doris Burke. Doris, over to you. Well, as you know, gentlemen, Greg Popovich is one of the foremost practitioners of the intentional fouling that sends poor free throw shooters to the line. Not exactly a fan favorite, and Pop says, quote, 
I think it's ugly. I think it's awful. But it's legal. It's there. If somebody doesn't want to get hacked, they should shoot free throws better. Guys, he's all about winning. Whether it's pretty or ugly, he doesn't care. They wear you down, Doris. Thank you so much. And Clark, as you said, the Spurs last season hitting 50 wins for the 14th consecutive season. By the way, that's an NBA record. Second closest were the Lakers with 12 straight, Steve, from 79 to 91. Yeah, 58 wins last season for San Antonio. Greg Popovich calls it corporate knowledge, just the consistency that comes with the experience of the group. And they've been together so long, particularly that core, that I think it allows the Spurs uh, to really kind of cruise at times during the regular season. Here's what San Antonio's going with right now. Splitters check in for Duncan. And Kawhi Leonard subbed in for Mono Ginova. The drive by Wade. Leonard with the steal. And now it's Green running. He can go all the way. He feeds it to Splitter. Back to Green. Kicks it out to Leonard. Jacks up a three. Miami grabs the miss. They led by as many as 18 points. And the foul called on Daniel Green. That is his first foul of the game. Mario Chalmers, he's checked in for Norris Cole. But Kawhi Leonard taken 15th overall in the 2011 draft. And believe it or not, he's the Spurs' highest drafted rookie since they took Tim Duncan, number one overall back in 97. It just shows you the legacy of the Spurs' success over the years. Bosch dishes to Aslam off his foot, and it's being called a kickball. Bosch with it, now guarded by Splitter. Bosch kicks to Allen. Six to shoot. Wade can't hit. And going back to Kawhi Leonard, he earned minutes in Coach Popovich's rotation from the first game on. And part of the reason he did, he's got great versatility defensively primarily, but he's a quick learner, quick study, understands things, doesn't take long to pick things up. And when you're a first-year player, that can separate you from a lot of guys and get you in the rotation, especially with a veteran team like the Spurs. A little bit of a magic act here, pulling off the Houdini to make that catch and slam. Stupendous, stupendous alley-oop. This crowd just stunned at the sight of that one. It's been a great day for them on the boards, Clark. That's definitely been a major factor in building this big lead. And, you know, from a number standpoint, the advantage might not be that large, but they have been manhandling them inside. Here's Splitter. Once again off the mark by San Antonio. You know, Heat head coach Eric Spolster worked his way up from the very bottom in that organization. I mean, he got his start as a video coordinator and through years of hard work and dedication has really become an outstanding coach. And that's out of bounds. San Antonio will retain possession. San Antonio making a switch here. Duncan's checked in. That's tipped. It's stolen by Wade. And uh, oh, here we go. Chalmers has got it. The fast break chance. Bosch, no good. Outside, Green. Leads him in there. It's stolen by Hazlitt. In transition, here comes Miami. Wade passes to Chalmers. Lays out. And out of bounds as the Spurs gain possession. Spurs trail by 21. Here's Leonard. Outside, Green. The Spurs rebound. Duncan to stop the run. Splitter, he's guarded by Haslam. Splitter kicks to Duncan. Here's Parker. Persistence pays off as they finally hit a shot. Parker's got seven points here in this quarter. And back to coach Eric Spolstra as a guy who got his start as a video coordinator, picking the game apart. Steve, he's very comfortable with the new advanced stat movement, analytics in the NBA. Yeah, and I've had a chance to speak with him quite a bit. He says that the way they use advanced stats is just a, as a conversation piece in the coaching room. Uh, their, their analytics department will bring them various information, and it will force them to ask questions, which is very healthy uh, for a coaching staff to do. Here's what San Antonio is going with right now. And Bonner comes in for Splitter. And it's Ginobili in for Kawhi Leonard. And you know that's going to be goaltending, guys. So that's a free basket right there. Wade 
seems to be slowing down just a touch. And uh, the, the difficulty as you get older, when you're not a great jump shooter, which Wade is not, is that the defenses will back off you. And that's the big challenge now for Dwayne Wade, adjusting to that newer style of defense that he's going to be looking for. Ginobili grabs the board. There was just enough defensive pressure to get him off balance and cause that shot to go awry. Nice ball movement by San Antonio. Rejected by Chalmers. And that's out of bounds. San Antonio will retain possession. LeBron's checked in for Miami. Here's Duncan. Drains the 19-footer. Duncan's got seven. And Steve, you go back to the strong output for Dwayne Wade last season for the fourth time. In his career, he averaged over 20 points and five rebounds and five assists. Again, Clark, one of only four players in the league last season to hit that mark. And Kevin, he led all shooting guards and player efficiency rating for the fifth consecutive season. Some might argue, but the numbers speak truth. He's the best shooting guard in the game. Great reflexes to get a hand on that pass and go the other way with it. It has not been an easy quarter for him, at least offensively speaking. Fast break, here we go. Out of bounds, Miami takes possession. And the Heat making a change here. Haslam's checked in. The Heat leading by 19 points. Wade outside. Bosch kicks to Wade. Off his leg. And the ref's whistling a kickball. Twenty-six seconds left to play in the first half. LeBron with it. Now defended by Bonnie. Haslam, that's good. Haslam's got ten points in the game. That's the third bucket in a row from the paint. This defense needs to clog those lanes in the middle much more effectively. Yeah, and until they do, the problems inside are only going to get worse. There's 18 seconds left in the second quarter. And another foul would give him three before the half, something to keep our eyes on. For Miami, they have gone two for two in the game at the line. That free throw good from Wade. Both free throws good from Wade. And here is Parker. Seven points in the game. Bonner for three. And it's good on the assist by Parker. He has five. You know, what an advantage he brings to this offense, guys. I mean, being able to drain the three ball, that really can spread a defense and extend the defense as well. A dominating first half of basketball. And so far, and now, brought to you by Sprint. Damon Bruce here. Welcome to the Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. And from high above, a view of downtown Miami and the American Airlines Arena. Welcome back, everyone. Nice numbers from D. Wade. He's got 14 points, and he's managed to get four of his points by way of the free throw line. And that may not be the first thing people notice about his performance, but those are important points nonetheless. And Doris Burke has something for us. Hey, Doris. Hi, guys. Well, LeBron James' game is so well-rounded, you might forget that he led the league in scoring back in 2008. He said, I've done that before. I'm capable of doing it, but that's not my job here. My job is to do a lot of everything, rebounding, passing, and defending. Guys, his versatility and completeness as a basketball player is what makes him so incredible to watch. He can do it all, Doris. Pass, shoot, special talents. You know, the more you watch Kawhi Leonard play, the more you realize that he is the perfect fit for the Spurs. I mean, he just looks like a Spur, and he's only been in the league a couple of years. Plays great defense, shoots from deep at a high rate, and really knows, accepts, and embraces his role on the team. And now in transition is Parker. Here we go. And that one hits back iron. The Heat leading by 17. Ball's knocked loose. Heaves it up. And a fast break now for the Spurs. Green dishes to Parker. Green kicks to Splitter. Now the feed to Leonard. 
target with his three. And back to Kawhi Leonard. Which Popovich sees him. Oh, my oh, 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 huge play. It's not possible. What we just talked is that possible? Not <laughs> it's probable, but it is possible, partner. It's it possible. Is possible. Not probable. It, it is possible. I don't know what all that meant, but you're right, Clark. You know, one of the things about the Heat since the big three has come together is that they've been able to find the right kinds of veteran players to step in and fill specific roles for this team as they've won a couple of championships now. LeBron with it. Leonard picks him up. LeBron passes to Wade. And he's going up for the alley-oop. Six on the shot clock. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Spurs will take it. Shane Battier has checked in for Udonis Haslam. Spurs trail by 16. And it's easy to have players want to join the Heat when they're competing for an NBA title every season. But Steve, even then, they find the ones that most fit their offensive and defensive philosophy. And that's when they're going to come up big for them. Yeah, for sure. This team has done such a good job putting together this roster around LeBron and Wade. You think about Birdman in the playoffs last year. You know, Mattier coming in here as a stretch four. They just found the right players and the right mix. And that's one of the big reasons why this team is back-to-back -back NBA champs. Hit his foot. And the official saying it was kicked. Chris Anderson has checked in for the Heat. Norris Cole comes in for Mario Chalmers. A little over two and a half minutes off the clock in this final half of play. And Wade slams it in. You know, guys, I would call that methodical but explosive. You know, he waits for the opportunity and then boom, right to the right. Hunter kicks to green. Ice ball boom by San Antonio. He dishes it to split it. Gets the front of the rim and out. Boy, they've really dominated on the glass. And, of course, they've done a lot of good things here tonight. But the rebounds have played a major factor. Hey, Steve, you know rebounding always one of the key barometers in determining the victor. Mattier dishes to Cole. Now Parker comes with the help. Cole, he's covered by Leonard. To the inside, tipped away. That's a hard pass to make when the defense has that many people in the paint. Green, the pass to Duncan. Mattier with the steal. Oh, and a fast break for the Heat. Cole's got the ball. Well, as they continue to dominate, you wonder just how much higher this lead might get. I think it really could get out of hand, and you can credit their defense just as much as their offense for that. Here's Parker. Well, he really anchors their defense. You know, they, his teammates can lean on him. They know that he's going to be in the right spot. He's so smart, so skilled. Really the complete package at the defensive end of the floor. And I don't know of too many other players who are as solid as he is in the low post. Just watch how many times he'll get his man to go for his fake and leave his feet. He gets him up in the air and takes advantage of him. Bellinelli, he's checked in for San Antonio. Well, you talk about the sustained greatness for future Hall of Famer Tim Duncan. How about this number? 13. That's the number of consecutive seasons to begin his career in which Duncan was named All-NBA and All-Defensive Team. Six more times than anyone else in league history. Enough said. End of story. First ballot Hall of Fame. Boris Diaz checked in for Tim Duncan. San Antonio's gone 2 of 5 with a three-point shot since coming out of the break. And the basket by Diaz. This is incredible. It's been a three-point barrage since halftime. Yeah, whether by design or by accident, it has been impressive. Going back to Duncan, probably more important to him than the individual accolades, Steve, have, have been the team successes during his time in San Antonio. No, no doubt. I mean, Duncan is just a winner. He's gone to the finals now 14 years apart, first in 99, and again in 2013. Pretty remarkable. Tim Duncan, he's checked in for splitter. 131 left to play in the third. Here's Diaw, and it's good in the assist by Parker. Diaw's got five points in the quarter. Textbook right there. Nice pass, great catch, beautiful finish. Again, the Heat, good for two. You know, from that in-between range, they've actually been the much hotter team. Well, when you make perimeter shots and knock down those jumpers, it opens up everything else. 
Well, Miami stormed through the regular season and were viewed as the clear-cut favorites to come out of the East, but it was not as easy as expected. After sweeping Milwaukee, the Bulls gave them a scare, then the Pacers really took them deep all the way to Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals. The Spurs making a switch here. Green's checked in. The Heat leading by 22. LeBron kicks to Wade. There's the dish to Bosch. Wade with it. Now guarded by Boris Dia. And it's out of bounds to the Heat as Miami retains possession. And for the Heat, the Pacers were their first real test, it seemed, and they had to survive a win or go home against them. It almost seemed Clark to take away any momentum they might have had when they went up against the Spurs in the finals. You know, it's interesting. When I think of momentum in the playoffs, it doesn't carry over from game to game or series to series. I think each game, Kevin, is really an entity in and of itself. That said, Miami found a way, despite being pushed by the Pacers and being pushed by the Spurs, both to game seven. It came down to LeBron James' brilliance, but also the hot shooting of a complimentary role-playing winner once again off the mark by San Antonio. Chalmers dishes to Wade. Power down with both hands. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's how you do it. Find the gap in the defense and attack that rim with force. He is so good at doing just that. Maybe as good as anybody. Just so athletic and strong. And as we conclude the third quarter, pretty much... And we're getting underway here in the fourth quarter. The scoreboard tells the story in this matchup, but we'll see how much things change up here. And guys, what do you think about the offensive approach we've seen so far for Miami? Man, they keep piling up the assists, guys. Great ball movement. Well, they've also really been down in with their jump shot. I mean, they have not missed much from mid-range today. And there's the call on Nando De Colo. That is his first foul of the game. Here's Allen. 11 feet away. Off the left rim and up. Anderson. In close, he hits it. Anderson's got the first points up on the board here in the fourth for the Heat. They're forcing the ball inside, and it's working beautifully. Yeah, the defense has been futile here. Five of the last six field goals in the lane. Oh, and a fast break for the Heat. Cole's got the ball. Throws down the breakaway jam. Boy, I love it. Active hands on the steal, active feet on the fast break. And Clark Power on the dunk. Uh, uh, guys, this is just too close of a game to be giving the ball up like that and then failing to get back in transition. Ray Allen is on the wing. And there's a whistle that goes on Corey Joseph. That is his first foul of the game. Well, they're not going to get back into this game when they commit frustration fouls like that one. How about exasperation fouls? I mean, that's what it looked like to me. It's an indication of the kind of game they've been having. Tim Duncan, he's checked in for San Antonio. Kawhi Leonard comes in for Marco Bellinelli. Leonard, no luck. Not a bad look at the hoop. Just couldn't get it to bounce in for him. Here's Battier. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. You know, Shane Batty, it was such a great addition for this Heat team. Really a coach on the floor. And since they added him to the mix, guys, guess what? Two straight championships. And so he hits both. And Steve, you look at Shane Battier, his ability to cross match and guard fours down low is one of the keys that enabled the Heat to go small, especially two years ago when they were in the finals. Yeah, and in the regular season last year, it was very successful for Miami. That's why they, they shot those threes so well, because they had the floor spread. Uh, but Battier always willing to take on that challenge physically. The question, though, is when you go against a guy like David West or even Carlos Boozer, it gets tougher. And so in the playoffs, Miami has had to maybe go small a little bit less often. He's a winner, though, isn't he? No question. And there's a whistle that goes on Corey Joseph. That's foul number two for him. That's his second personal foul. 14 foul. About a minute and a half into the fourth quarter now. And again, Ray Allen. When they pulled up from mid-range, more often than not, they buried it. You know, that's not always the number one option, but if the defense gives that to you, you got to take it. I'll tell you what, that's just a major unforced error right there, guys. My goodness. Here's Cole, defended by Joseph. 
And as you might expect for the team with the second best record in the West, the Spurs dominated the East last season, played each team twice for a total of 30 games, and went 25 and 5 in that stretch. Bellinelli, he's checked in for San Antonio. And Clark, back to what you said about the Spurs in the East, it was far and away the best record against the conference, Steve, for a team in the West. Yeah, the second best record was Memphis with 22 wins. So kind of scary to think that they rested their big stars a few times against teams in the East, and they were still able to put up that kind of a record. Outside for Lewis. The shot, no good. And San Antonio will go the other way with it. Feeds it to Dakota. Here's Leonard. Ooh, the double clutch. Takes a three. They get it back. Dishes it to Bellinelli. It's good from long range. Oh, he's going to keep banging those home if you give him that much space. The Heat have gotten four of their six shots to fall so far here in the fourth. A pretty nice efficiency there. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Marco Bellinelli. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. You know, it's kind of easy to think the Heat will be a team that hurts you more in transition than behind the three-point line, but one of the strongest parts of this Heat team is their ability to hurt you from the arc. Here's Bonner. Knocks it loose. Third minute of action now gone here in the fourth. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Marco Bellinelli. That's his third foul so far. Bonus situation in effect, so we'll head to the free throw line for two. And back to the Heat, they shot 39% as a team from beyond the arc, which was only bested by the Golden State Warriors. And Steve helps when you have five players shooting over 40% from deep. And that is just incredible. Those are Steve Kerr like numbers. <laughs> Let's not get carried away here, Kevin. Now, this is a team that's fun to watch, the way they stretch the floor in the driving lanes. But because of that floor spacing, it opens everything up for James and Wade. You know, the Spurs really have a cohesive culture, and part of that is something that Greg Popovich has been able to do, and that's being able to join guys together that normally might not hang out. For instance, you had Matt Bonner taking Steven Jackson out to a Coldplay concert last season. One way to help guys get to know each other off the court, and it helps them on the court. And the foul call on Kawhi Leonard. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. And back to Popovich and the Spurs, he really makes a point of getting to know his players and have them get to know one another. That's right, Kevin. He, he likes to have his players have a sense of perspective about the world. He, he wants them to know that there are other things going on besides the NBA. In fact, back in 2012, he had the players watching the presidential debates together. And he's good on the second. San Antonio's gone a disappointing two of six on three-point attempts here in the fourth. Outside, Bellinelli. Good. Bellinelli's got six here in this quarter. You can really see that his confidence is at a high level here in this half. He didn't have a three in the first. Here's Cole. Smooth as silk on the finger roll. A large part of what they've been able to do here is centered around his offense. Leonard on the wing. From deep. Cole with the rebound. Cole's got four rebounds now tonight. Unfortunately, that's been the result for him over and over, guys. He just cannot find the bottom of the basket. And that one falls for Cole. Udonis Haslam, he's checked in for Miami. And both free throws good for Cole. And for the Spurs, they're shooting just 28%. They are offensively out of whack and out of step with each other at this point. Well, the Red Rocket, as they call him, one of the best outside shooting big men that we've seen in this league the last few years. You cannot leave him open outside defensively. Yeah, classic shooting four-man. His game is to spot up at the three-point line and wait for the open look. And he makes the first. Daniel Green, he's checked in for San Antonio. And both free throws good for Cole. The Spurs shooting a paltry 33% in the fourth. Not a good showing for this offense. Green, no luck. He can't get anything to drop. And the way he's going, I'm not sure it's something he should try to shoot his way out of. No, that might only serve to make things worse, Steve. Sometimes the harder you try, the worse it gets. 
And it's out of bounds. The Heat able to retain possession here. A super defensive play. I mean, if that pass gets through, it's probably two points. And he knew that. He knew if it gets through, it's a score. So that's why he sold out for it and got a hand on it. That's good from Allen on the assist by Haslam. And that's now nine points for Ray Allen. All of the scoring in tight is coming at that end of the court. Well, they're finding the holes in the defense, Clark, and they're exploiting them. Talk about doing a Rip Van Winkle on defense. Come on, guys, wake up. Why are they leaving him open at the three-point line? Come on. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Marco Bellinelli. That will get him his fourth foul of the game, and due to the bonus, we'll head to the line for two. Boris Diaw from France, really a unique player. I mean, he came into the league, guys, as more of a playmaking small forward. Now he plays at the power forward spot, and he's still much more of a passer than he is a scorer. Catching up on the changes with Miami. Anderson comes in for Joel Anthony. And Shane Battier subbed in for Richard Lewis. For Miami, they've gone six of eight from the field in the fourth so far. It's been a great start to this final quarter for them. And the foul called on Daniel Green. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. And Clark, you mentioned Diao's skill level. Not the biggest or most athletic guy, but, uh, you know, Steve, he's still effective. He's really a, a great basketball player. What I mean by that, just he knows angles. He knows how to use his body to, to create passes and shots for himself. And defensively, he's very effective, particularly guarding the post because of his strength. So it's Miami now. Poked away, and that's out of bounds. Miami will retain possession. Make a play. 58 seconds left in the game, and Boris Diaw picks up the foul. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. And he knocks down the first one. And both free throws good for Cole. San Antonio's gone over and over to the three-point shot in the fourth quarter. Four of nine. Mill. A wide open shot is on the money. Looks like they're going to finish strong, but there just aren't enough ticks left on the clock. Well, Steve, it's a good run they're having now, but they just waited too long to have it. Cole, the pass to Anderson, and Boris Diaw picks up the foul. That's his third foul so far. Bonus situation in effect, so we'll head to the free throw line for two. No good on that one. Talking about Chris Anderson, guys, the bird man. We weren't sure if he was going to be able to fly last season, but he did latch on with a very good Miami Heat team who was in need of some help rebounding, which is his strength. He still can do that and block shots as well. Dwayne Wade's checked in for Ray Allen. There's 31 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Ball stolen. Probably time to, to just say it, guys. This game is over. I think you're right on target there. Here's Diaw. And it's Miami with the rebound. Wade with it. And Patrick Mills gets that whistle that time. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. San Antonio making a switch here. Both free throws good from Wade. Eight seconds left in the fourth quarter. He kicks it to Mills. Shoots the three. The shot is off. And so Miami takes this one by a big margin. How much to be critical over this win fight? Not at all. I mean, they showed up not just to play. They showed up to give great effort. Our season has returned. Has returned.